Slick Shot Show Off is the card that is on everybody's mind, and today we are going to be playing it in the Boros Heroic Shell. And this is, again, the deck that takes the best advantage of that because it is the deck that is playing protection spells in the form of Lauren's Escape, which gives a creature indestructible until end of turn, and God's Willing, which gives your creature protection from a color until end of turn. So you can imagine some pretty sick starts where you go plot this on turn two, turn three, cast it, maybe you play a cantrip like a Defiant Strike, maybe you play Homestead Courage to pump it up a little bit, and still have your other mana available to protect it. <laughs> all right, Slick Shot. Ooh! boy chat are you guys ready for one of the turns of all time hey everybody doom wake here and welcome to some more pioneer in pioneer and ot chat I meant otj and pioneer you know what i was trying to say anyways this is kind of the first shell that people had really discussed with slick shot show off because this particular deck list is really taking advantage of the plot ability where a lot of times you're just going to cast it for face up. You're just going to play it as a 1-2 flying haste, get in there for a point of damage, maybe untap and have an explosive next turn. But the really cool part about Slick Shot is if your opponent is holding up mana or if you want to do, if, if you're worried about them having something else, then you can plot it and then on your next turn you can cast it for free and then have all of your mana available to do stuff. The Heroic deck traditionally plays roughly somewhere between 16 to 18 creatures. I'm playing somewhere right in the middle there, 17 with this particular build. The traditional four favorite Hoplite, four Monastery Swift Spear, four Illuminator Virtuoso, just a completely ridiculous card. 90% of the time when you untap with this card, your opponent is going to die on the spot because every time you target it, you get to connive, and if you have enough spells in hand, you get to discard spells to keep pumping it, and it has double strike, plus... So it's, it's pumping itself, it is with, with the connives, you're pumping it off of your other pump spells, again, Defiant Strike, Monstrous Rage, things like that, and then on top of all of that, it also has Double Strike, so you get some pretty quick kills with this. And then the Slick Shots that we talked about, and then the 17th creature is 1 10th District Legionnaire. This used to be a 4 of, but has been replaced by Show Off. They kind of do similar things, they both have Haste, but again, Show Off is higher upside because you can plot it, and it effectively has uh, sort of like Double Heroic, where... This thing gets plus one when you target it. This thing gets plus two when you target when you cast any spell for that matter. What's important to remember about the heroic deck is there was a lot of spots previously where you get you got into situations where you say had like a favorite hoplite and an illuminator virtuoso in play. Every time you cast one spell that targets one of those, you get a bonus. But it's a little bit better if say you have a swift spear and a favorite hoplite because then you can target the favorite hoplite get the bonus from the Hoplite, and then also get the Prowess Trigger from the Swift Spear. And now that we have a better mix, we have an even split, right? You have four Hoplite, four Virtuoso, those are your heroic creatures, four Show Off, four Swift Spear, those are your Prowess creatures. So you kind of have a, a more even mix, so you're going to be able to have one heroic creature and then one or multiple Prowess creatures. As far as the spells are concerned, we've gone over the Protection Spells, the God's Willings, and the Lauren's Escapes. The rest of the deck is a lot of cantrips, so 4 Defiant Strike, which gives a creature plus 1, plus 0, draw a card. Ancestral Anger, which gives a creature Trample and plus 1, or plus X, plus 0. X is the number of Anger anger in your graveyard, plus 1. So the first one is 1, second one is 2, so on and so forth. Monstrous Rage, which is not a cantrip, but it is an incredibly powerful card because it gives your... It's, it does a couple of things. So the initial turn that you're casting it, you get the plus two, plus oh, and the monster roll, which is another plus one, plus one. So it's effectively plus three, plus one trample. But what's important is if you don't kill them that turn, your creature still retains trample for the following turn. So if you have to go for a two-turn push, you already have that trample and plus one, plus one in the bank for next turn, which is pretty important. And then, again, obviously, it goes super crazy with Virtuoso. You can imagine giving your double strike creature plus three, plus one, and trample. It's pretty good. Uh, past that, Reckless Rage. This is a card that these decks used to play a bunch of copies of, but have kind of since moved away from those. And the biggest reason is because we are playing Slick Shot, where previously, all of your creatures, with it deals four damage to a creature you don't control and two damage to one you do control. So previously, if you targeted a Hoplite, a Monastery Swift Spear, or a 10th District Legionnaire, guaranteed, no matter no matter what else you have, it was not going to kill your own creature. But now if you target Show Off, Show Off only has two toughness, so you have to, but you have to pump the Show Off before you can Reckless Rage it. So it's a little more awkward with Show Off, but 
Still a powerful enough card that we do have it in the main deck here. And then the last spell that I want to go over here is Homestead Courage. D doesn't cantrip, doesn't trample, but what's nice about this is it's two things. One, it gives your creature vigilance, which means that if you're pumping a creature and making it very large, you can attack with it. And then if they're not dead, you still have the creature available on blocking duties for the following turn. And two, it has flashback, which means that not only do you get two bites at the apple with Illuminator Virtuoso, you can also discard the Courage to the Virtuoso to not only give you a spell for the Connive, but also another thing in your graveyard that you can utilize to then also target the Virtuoso. Last but certainly not least, just a couple of uh, spell lands here. We have one Spike Field Hazard and one Sejiri Shelter. One of each, you know, it's... Basically, so that you have the appropriate land count, which you get to 20, but then you also have some additional spells. So you, these are cards that you really don't want to play more than one copy of, but the first copy of each is, I think, pretty fine, uh, rather than the 19th and 20th lands. Speaking of lands, nothing too crazy. Uh, just 16 dual lands, a plains to search off a field of ruin, and then one one utility land, excuse me, in the form of Sokinzon. Sideboard, again, relatively straightforward. We have our Gigantha, never leave home without the emotional support elk. An additional copy of God's Willing for the Heavy Removal Spell decks, Rest in Peace for Phoenix, Light of Hope for Temporary Lockdown mostly, but also Gain 4 against Mono Red, could come up. Rending Volley for Amalia, Reckless Raid, mostly here for the other creature decks like Mono Red, Amalia, things like that, where you need to be able to kill their stuff. They have like one specific creature that they're trying to work with. And then you have the four copies of Showdown of the Skulls. I think this is the best card for those types of grindy matchups. The other card you could consider here is Case of the Crimson Pulse, which I have been thinking about over Showdown, but I'm going with four Showdowns. And then to complement that, we have an additional land because it is kind of hard to cast four drops with only 20 lands, 18 plus the two DFCs. And then last but certainly not least, a new addition here from OTJ in the form of Torpa Orb. It's a very small one. Well, it's there's only one copy, but it is quite good against specifically Amalia. So that's why you see a Torpa Orb here in the sideboard. That's it for the deck list. I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. All right, let's do this. I will play first. Okay. First league, by the way, I promise. This is definitely the first league. We did not play another league in one two drop. Why would I ever do that? And I would also never lie to you. Never, ever. Yeah, specifically Vein Ripper is very hard to beat. Razor Burge Thicket. Amalia Gaming. Oh my god. Are we gonna... Are we gonna... Alright, here's the question. How many games is this match going to take? How many games do you think we're gonna play in this match? I don't even want to attack. Because they're just blocking every time. I'm guessing that we are going to play six games. That would be my guess. 11. I was gonna, I was gonna take the over at six. We'll take the over at five and a half. Over under five and a half. Scattered Groves. Bruh. Tap lands, huh? Okay, it turns out we might not be playing four games. As a matter of fact... Who's the prowess versus Amalia matchup? Um, I would assume that Amalia is much more favored against prowess because you don't have like the ways to draw the games like this deck does. The reason this matchup is actually not that bad for heroic is you have you have a bunch of different ways that can actually draw the game between you know pumping their creature with defiant strike, uh, monstrous rage, things like that to get past the twenty power threshold. But unfortunately, the prowess deck does not quite have that kind of stuff i guess we have to attack here am i slow rolling them no i'm one short right i think i think i'm one short oh no i'm just slow rolling them okay never mind <laughs> i i didn't do the math all right my bad all right i'm sorry to dab if you're watching this uh please don't unfollow don't unsubscribe i didn't mean to slow roll you i'm just i can't do math right now it's too late we get to try out the Torpor Orb. The technology has been uh, has been acquired. What if we cut against this deck? What do you mean by pumping their creature? So, cards like Defiant Strike and Monstrous Rage can target any creature on the battlefield. The blow up the board text on Amalia only happens if Amalia's power is exactly 20. 
So when it's at 19 power, if you get it to more than 20 power before the explore trigger resolves that would get it to 20 power, it never actually sees that it's 20 power and therefore just goes infinitely. And that game ends in draw. And Lauren's Escape works in a similar way where you can make their Wild Growth Walker indestructible. So this card can draw the game, this card can draw the game, and this card can draw the game. So you have 12 ways to draw the game against them, which is kind of insane. It's kind of crazy. I think I'm going to cut Ruckus. I don't know, though. Trample's kind of important. And I feel like my next worst card is maybe Swift Spear. I'm going to try cutting two of these. And the God's... Uh, yeah, let's cut the God's Willing. I don't know if I want that. An MTG, a draw like that, does that mean they lose? No. Magic Online, assuming that both players are f 6 and the Amalia player is auto-yielded, the game will recognize that it's a loop. And it'll just... The game will reset. So Moto does recognize that it's a loop. Which... Funny enough, that also happens on Arena because we kind of we found that out where uh, I was playing against Amal I was playing against Amalia and I'm gonna keep this hand. Let's ship this. I was playing against Amalia and I went to I think I went to like kill my opponent's let me get rid of this. I think I went to kill their walker and they responded and uh Tamio safekeeping their walker and then Arena drew the game. No, online, I don't think it registers as a draw online. Ooh, that's tempting. I'll do it next turn. I think in the, like, when you're looking at the online record, I don't even think it shows up. It just, like, it, it like if you draw game one, it'll still show a 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm pretty sure that's how it, how it shows up online. So many X ones. So many X ones. Hmm monstrous rage huh this is kind of awkward i am not in a good position yeah let's do this go to combat attack and then i think i'm going to i want to get this out of here because i don't want them to be able to convoke with it if they have cord or anything like that and then i'm going to hold up mana for rage how does it work in paper? In paper, it's also a draw. So if you've gotten to the point... Ooh, Thoughtseize. If you've gotten to the point where, like, the loop is inevitable, if the walker is indestructible, or if the Amali is more than 20 power, the ruling on it, and they changed this for the most recent dream hack, was the ruling was that if you... I'm trying to think of the, the wording. Mm, this is bad. The ruling was that if you... If, if the loop happened and neither player had a way to break it up, the game would end in a draw. But what you could do is you could, like, they, so it's weird because they would be technically forced to mill out because loop is infinite explorers. But if you're not changing, if you're not, like, advancing the game state in any meaningful, in any meaningful way, the Amalia player would have to mill their entire deck, right? So if they mill their entire deck, if they don't have a way to stop the loop, but you do, what happens is that you force them to mill their whole deck, and then after they've milled their whole deck, you can then cast your removal spell to kill the Amalia, stop the loop, and they've milled their entire deck. So it's it, it's, it gets into some weird situations in paper. I don't know if that ever materialized. Like, I haven't heard of anybody, you know, actually doing that. What they reveal? Temple Garden. <sighs> so let's go here discard this would love to find a land here okay perfect let's just go here i have to hold up my tricks to like try to break up the amalia loop if they don't block are they dead three four five six seven oh i think they're just dead anyways right seven eight nine eighteen they're off it 80 cards by the way no creatures by the way all right, keep this. Do I put back second Virtuoso or third land? I think it's third land. Against Nib, you just need all of your spells. I know. Like, you would think that if you're, if you're watching a Pro Tour Top 8 and you're seeing that the, the person playing the aggressive deck is intentionally trying to get the game to a state where they can force a draw, you would think that would be the, the red flag of like, yeah, something is probably wrong here. You know what I mean? It's like... Because if that doesn't do it, then what does? It's 
Seven games? Really? Seven? It's kind of insane. And that would make sense, Twitch Shark. I, and I do agree with him. I think the, the, the Amalia matchup is good for Heroic. Because you have you just have so many ways to just... You can just play any amount of games. And not only that, I also think that the matchup is already favorable as is, even if it weren't for the amount of ways that you could draw the game, because you're just aggressive creatures, they don't interact that well, and you have a lot of trample. So even if it weren't for your ability to draw the game, I still think you'd be favored in the matchup. But then on top of all of that, you can also just draw the game. Yeah, basically just infinite mulligans. That's essentially what it amounts to. This lethal. Uh, I don't know. You figure it out. They have to chump block, right? Yeah, they definitely have to chump block. I think they're dead anyways. Yeah, they're just dead anyways, right? And this deck's easy. Easiest deck in the format. All right, Nave to Light. <clears throat> I don't actually know if I want to do the showdown plan against them. I kind of just want to be more aggressive. I'm going to cut this Reckless Rage. What's Torp Orb do against them? Torp Orb stops Omnath, Niv. Doesn't seem that good. Light of Hope's good against if they have lock. I don't think they have lockdown, but it is good against Leyland Binding. Yeah, it stops the Omnath ETB, but it does not stop the Landfall ability. That is correct. I mean, I don't really think I want to do that much. I just want to keep my deck as low to the ground as possible. I don't think the, the showdown plan is good. I feel like it's just too slow. Just don't think that's what the games are about. But it's like, I don't know, they are killing all your shit. Okay, so we go... Oh, we actually get to plot on one. Plot jump scare. Any plotters? Any plotters? Are we plotting? Bruh. That's bad. It's not good. <laughs> and I cut all my removal. We could draw exactly the one copy of Spike Field Hazard. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I could cycle Defiant Strike, but I have too much self-respect. I might do it on their turn, though, because they don't have green mana. Not sure how much that matters, but they don't have green mana. Okay, it seems like their hand is a little sus. I'm not casting Lauren's Escape, don't ask. Okay, there we go. Uh, I guess we can Ruckus. Oh, wait, yeah, right. <laughs> undo, undo. I forgot that I didn't have to tap mana for that card. <laughs> I like cast the spell, go into tap mana. Like, no, that's not how that works. Is the bird viable in other decks beside Boros? Yeah, there's a prowess deck that we may or may not be playing after this, depending on how long I want to go tonight. Uh, but there is, a, I do have a prowess deck as well that I want to try out. There's a couple of different ways to build prowess too. I'm not entirely sure what's the best way, but there's like a version that has profs. There's a version that doesn't have profs, and you know, time will tell on exactly how it's how we're supposed to build that deck, but. I do want to try it out. I know that I'm giving up a damage by not targeting the Hoplite, but I kind of want to spread the power around a little bit. A Tarka Red could be kind of nice, too. I, I kind of hadn't thought about a Tarka Red. That deck also got a recent upgrade in the form of Questing Druid. So what does that deck look like? Soulscar, Swift Spear, Questing Druid, Slick Shot, a Tarkus Command, Play With Fire. Do you play Token Makers? Token makers like, I don't know, Dragon Fodder? Probably not. You don't need token makers. It's unlikely they kill both of my threats this turn. Uh, but I could bottom it looking for a cantrip. It's got to be good enough. It's just so much damage. Because I'm under the assumption they're going to kill one of these this turn. Like, probably this. But even if they do, I think keeping that on top is fine. If they don't have a removal, if they don't have a removal spell, they're just dead. Play testing with breakout. Yeah, I don't know if you want to do breakout stuff, because like, the the issue with breakout is that you kind of just want to play a bunch of one drops anyways, and I'm I'm not sure if that's conducive to 
Because, like, break it into a one-drop is kind of awkward. It does give Soul Scar haste, which is interesting. Same with Questing Druid. So, it could be okay. That is not a spell. Was this better than picking up Giganta? Tough to say. Probably not. It's close. Because I could have just played tap land, pick up Giganta, not flashback. And they'd be at six. Might have been, though. Yeah, Burning Tree is also interesting, especially if you want to play Reckless Bushwhacker. Burning Tree makes Bushwhacker a lot better. Hmm. That's worse. Yeah, that's the other issue with Breakout, is you, you, have to, you have to have, like, a very, very specific number of creatures. What is nice... How am I at nine, by the way? What is very nice about that is Questing Druid acts as a somewhat decent creature for Breakout, but it's also just a... It's also a spell. So Questing Druid kind of splits the difference there. Which is nice. Bob Lay. Breakout with 20 creatures is over 90% success rate. On 20? Really? I guess I never I guess I never looked at the math. I know that Karsten did the math when that card was first spoiled. But I never really thought about the math. Yeah, well Coco's different, I think. Because like the math on Coco is you really have to hit two for it to be a playable card. But breakout you only have to hit one. So it's a little bit different. I mean, it is a spell. I think I actually, weirdly enough, can attack. I don't know how I've gotten myself into this position. Because you're not going to cast Coco in with the intention of hitting one creature. That you, If that was the case, you just wouldn't put the card in your deck. This card, Beans Omnath. Yeah, I guess they don't have green. Well, they do have green, but they have to send in the Shaman into the Gigantha, which they may not want to do. Reniving. Kind of feels like reniving. Should probably be an upkeep stop. I may have to Lauren's escape upkeep. I'm trying to think of what my out is. Although, somebody told me they made it basically impossible to actually find. Ooh. Like, they changed the way that you have the prime sub. <laughs> That's so close. Come on. Uh, fuck. Do I just put them to one? I think so. What else am I doing, right? Bait the third ley line. Well, they don't have ley line up. I think I have to assume that they're going to find a creature, and this is not good enough. Or I think I need to find a creature is what I'm trying to say. Like, I know that in theory it's lethal next turn, but like this by itself is also lethal next turn, even if I don't draw a spell. So I'd rather bottom that and try to find another flyer. Like, just another copy of this, I think, is my best draw with them at one. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Well, no, the Prime is not free. The Prime subscription is free with your Amazon Prime membership. Okay, we'll do about that. Oh, and they can flicker the binding that doesn't have anything under it. Right, okay. Yeah, we lost. All right, game three. Game three... This game's a bit of slog. Still don't think I want Torpor Orb. Volley doesn't really kill enough. Volley doesn't even kill Yorion. I guess it kills Omnath. Well, surely we were not going to draw the what if Spike Field Hazard, right? Surely that's not the case. I'm just going to pretend that the top card of my deck was, you know, a Sacred Foundry. We'll go with that. This hand is nice. This is one of those hands that I'm not quite sure how to sequence. So, again, the plot really gives you a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different ways to sequence your spells. I think I'm supposed to go hoplet on one, plot on two, double plot on three, and then just turn four, go berserk. But I think I do want to play hoplite first. Because that kind of like baits some interaction. But yeah, these, these plot cards really just give you... They really give you like the ability to just sequence your spells in such a unique way which is why I really, really enjoy them. It just they, they give these decks a new dimension to them, which is cool. Okay. Uh, combat. Yeah, we're definitely just going to double plot here and then go nuts next turn. I kind of wish that I had a uh, protection spell because I want to like do a bunch of stuff next turn, but I currently cannot protect the... Uh, the slick shot. 
if I go big next turn. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe they'll just tap out for Fable and die. <laughs> they are. I think they are dead if they tap out for Fable. Okay, that doesn't matter. Yeah, they're just dead, right? I'm almost positive they're dead. <laughs> All right, slick shot. Oh, boy. Chat, are you guys ready for a turn? Are you guys ready for one of the turns of all time? How much damage? Sure, why not? I guess I'll do that. 6, 12. Uh, sure. <laughs> Content time. So much damage. So much damage. <laughs> we in the business call this an OTK. <laughs> OTK. 11-4 uh, and 11-12 or 11-2. That was nice. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment in the comment section below for that one. Archlord, thank you for the 11-month resub. Yeah! What's the new beta? Uh, Vampires. Do you remember me at all? Turns out the new meta is the same meta. I have played a like, I have played a lot of vampires today. We're scissoring, huh? How do I beat that? How do I defeat the scissors? Just race, race kick W. Can I? Can I even do that? All right, let's do some maths. Okay, the highest damage output. This turn is Swift Spear, Monstrous Rage, which would be like 7, put them to 13. I take 1 to 13. Then next turn, I go Anger, Courage. I don't even think that's enough. So I guess I would have to draw a land at that point. I could block. I really don't want to block, though. Rage, Hoplite, Map Token is decent on blocks, but I kind of get blown out if they have Stubborn Denial. I think I'm just going to race. I'm just, I'm just going to race. I don't know if this is right, but I'm, I'm just going to race. You double homestead, you can block. Oh, you're saying just double homestead this turn? But that's really bad if they have torch. Because if they have torch, I kind of have nothing left. I don't know. How do you not just say go? I mean, saying go is kind of weird if they just have stub for my reckless rage now. I mean, I guess even if they stub the rage, I don't take damage. Like, the hoplite doesn't take damage that turn. Kind of a weird spot. I think doing it this way is okay. But yeah, I guess Double Courage would have given me a 5-6. Maybe that play was better. Yeah, there was also like Swift Spear, attack with just Swift Spear, pass, hold up, rage. And then again, take the same line where I go block here, rage these two, trade. Which I guess I can just do that next turn. That's 7. Hmm. Okay, well, we still might have lethal. I guess I could just go Homestead Courage... Hoplite hit for five, pass with rage up. And then if they go for this, we can just go chump, rage this, take two. If they don't go for this, we can just chump here, take two. But then we lose to shrapnel. I guess we're kind of losing to shrapnel no matter what I do. Yeah, let's do that. I think I'm into this. And just hold up the, uh... yeah, I'm into this. Homestead this to give it vigilance, then just hold up rage. I think, I think this play's good. Kind of wish I had just gone for double homestead last turn. Probably puts us in a much better position. Anger Swift Spear. Well, no, the problem with Anger Swift Spear, Belfi, is that I lose an additional point of power. Because the math the math that I did involves anger. If you anger the Swift Spear instead of the Hoplite, you just you're just minus one power. So even if I anger the Swift Spear and then double courage, I'm still one point short. Because it's the same math, but I'm losing a point on Actually, I'd be two points because they can still chump block with the Siren if I don't cast the Rage. I would still be short in that scenario. And this is all assuming I even draw the untapped land. Yeah, I guess Blast beats us no matter what. I can't play around Blast, you're right. Like, that's going to beat me no matter what I do. So now I wonder if we're in a situation where now they just hold back the map token. They clearly don't have they clearly don't have Shrapnel Blast because they, they would have just killed me by now. So they can at least... You know, breathe a sigh of relief. They don't have that. Kind of hope they just go for case. 
but it's like pretty obvious that I have rage, given that I didn't flash back the courage. Well, actually, it's not that obvious, right? Because if I flash back the courage, I'm just dead on board. So maybe it's not the most obvious thing. There's so many layers to this. All right, I will go to five life. I'm trying to think of what our best draw is. Whoa, why did they shock? Uh, okay, untap. So what if my best play was Courage the Hoplite and then Anger Courage the Swift Spear? <laughs> There's no way they have Blast. Zero chance they have Blast. Could be Odawara, yeah. That would kind of make a lot of sense. Good call. Can I beat Odawara? Can hold up Escape. Can I force Lethal with both while holding up Escape? No, I'd be one short, right? Could also be Case. Come on, this so fucking complicated. I don't want to think this hard. I just want to attack people with my 7 million power hoplite. Why are you making me think? Okay, I think I think I found the line. I think we just do this. Well, then we lose to Stub this way, right? They land Courage Anger. What's the point of casting Anger? I don't see what the Anger accomplishes. Like, you want me to Anger the Swift Spear? I don't know what that does. If I Anger the Swift Spear, it gets it to 4 power. Oh, and then this is just lethal over the map token. And then if they case, we rage, but then they have stub. So I guess we can't beat stub anyways. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Anger gives trample. I know, but like trample doesn't matter that much. Trample on the swift spear doesn't matter. This thing already has trample. If that's what you're asking. If they had stub, they would have used that already. That's not necessarily true. Why else would they shock? Okay, well, that doesn't matter, right? Because now we just wait for them to block. They punted. Well, it depends on if they had stub, right? They clearly shocked to be able to hold up an indestructible thing. But, like, that's not necessarily a punt, right? This case specified non-token. No, they could have done this. But, like, again, if they don't have anything in hand, then what's the point of them targeting the token? Like, we don't necessarily know for a fact they had something in hand. What a weird game. Yeah, I know Rage kills them. What a strange game. I feel like there's so many things that, like, could have happened differently that game. So many things. All right, game two. Apply your damage. I don't need to apply damage. We're just going to game two. Okay, minus two, by the way. So, Scald's too slow. Definitely don't want that... I don't know that I want any of this stuff. Maybe Rage. Canny Rage, Canny Rage. Cut second, Ruckus, and God's Willing. God's Willing kind of useless against big artifact creatures. What does Torporb do? Just Siren, right? I guess Light of Hope can kill uh, in Soul Artifacts. Maybe that's worth it. I could see that. Trim on two Courage. On the draw, four, five creatures. And this hand's not even good if I draw land. I'm going to ship this. Well... So we went from five creatures to zero creatures. It's not a good ratio. I mean, it is what it is. Would have kept that hand. Which one, the first or the second one? The first one? I don't know. The first one's kind of sketchy. I mean, the second one was obviously not a keep. But I, the problem I have with the first hand is, like, five creatures is just not where you want to be in this matchup. Because I think you, the matchup typically comes down to racing situations. And having five creatures means it's going to be extremely hard for you to race because you just don't have enough stuff. At least that's kind of the way that I look at it. That's my conclusion for today's testing so far. Uh, Proft was great. This deck's good. The Bant Plot deck was unplayable. <laughs> but we got some sweet screenshots with the Bant Plot deck. And that's all that counts, you know. No, don't torch me, bro. All right, fine. Only fair. Yeah, Heroic is not a new deck, but it kind of, like... I mean, it's not a new deck in terms of the archetype, but it does feel very different in how it plays out with Slick Shot. Like, it feels like you have a lot more... a lot more options that Slick Shot gives you when, like, they're holding up removal and you just don't want to play into it. Just plot the guy and make them, you know, time walk themselves gives you a lot of stuff to be able to do which is pretty sick
they do. More cases. Has the case been solved yet? Unclear. Double Citadel. Right, yeah, exactly. That's why it's so good. Hmm. Certainly not raging their combat career. <laughs> there really is always a new heroic card. Feels like every set there is. The achievement's good too. Demonic Ruckus. That card's nice. Yes, we have played that. There's two in this deck. And it is quite good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I was trying to look at the spoiler again to to see if I was right or wrong on this, but I think Demonic Ruckus, at least from the cards that I looked at, might be the only card that plots for less than its mana value. Maybe there's a couple other ones that I missed, but that's why the card is so good, is it's just it's so cheap. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I forgot they could just do this, huh? Well, I don't know why I thought they could not target the Citadel. We had this conversation before. Eh, all right, so Spear down. <laughs> Minus one Swift Spear, by the way. All right, your turn. Yeah, we need to play Soul Scar. Stinger back Terror. I don't think that card's good. Maybe it's matchup specific. Like, if your opponent has a... Like, if you're playing an aggressive red deck... And maybe you're playing a red mirror where your opponent has a lot of damage base removal, and that could be the that could be like the top end of your curve. Why is it good? I don't get why it's good. It's good if you play terror. Well, it doesn't even work with terror. Because I'm pretty sure state-based effects check that it has smaller power before it, you know, before it gets the, the, the terror trigger. I don't think it works the way you want it to with terror. Bro, how am I beating a 4-4 indestructible? What are we doing with our lives? Why am I even here? Alright, go. Your turn. Yeah, we did play Proft already. Duelist felt insane to me. That card was... That card overperformed. Okay, now we're attacking with that. I guess they have another one untapped. The second case. It, like, kind of lets me attack, right? Just to push some damage. No, it's definitely not lethal. Because they could just make a 4-4 indestructible. But, I mean, I have to do it to push damage, I think. It sure does not feel great, though. I guess we save the Reckless Rage. So they take four? Nah. Well, I mean, you have Illuminator Virtuoso, but that's the only thing that has double strike. No, nah, no team or Battle Rage. I was thinking about playing um, one-off. Oh, yeah, we had five more damage. Yeah, we were one short. I guess we, yeah, we were not that far off. I thought we were farther off from that. I forgot that the uh, trample over and stuff like that. So, yeah, we were one damage short. Maybe because I was one damage short, I should have waited a turn. It's kind of close. Yeah, the other card I was thinking about playing was... Um, the other card I was thinking about playing was Boros Charm. Which, Boros Charm does seem kind of nice with Slickshot. And I do have, like, a more burn-focused version with Slickshot, where it's, like, you have the wizard stuff, wizard's lightning, and, and that kind of stuff, with Soul Scar, Slickshot, because Slickshot's a wizard. G2 Lava Runner. And then you combine that with, like, Play With Fire, and Boros Charm, uh, Screw the Critics, that kind of stuff. I don't know if that version's better, but I think it's just different. Plotting on one? Mm hmm... I guess Swiss Spear is not great if they have Torch. Why not Clever Lubomancer? Eh, Lubomancer's just not very good. You can see the first copy of Charm being good. And it's like even more... It's like something that you kind of want access to more because you have Slickshot show off. So they clearly don't have a removal spell here. I wonder if I'm supposed to... You trying to jabate me? Are you trying to jabate me? Hmm. I mean, I was thinking about going Hoplite Plot, but... Mm, just go Hoplite Pass. Play it slow. kind of like Hoplite Pass. Let's chill out. We're chilling. Turns out it might have been a little bit better if I'd plotted on one. But, I mean, they're not doing anything, so I don't, I don't mind that much. You're asking questions to me about lore? Brother, I barely know enough. I barely know how to play the game. You think I know anything about lore? I got nothing for you, Gremlin. I wish I could help you, but... Is there really no Boros Charm on Arena? That is absurd to me. So, is their plan Torch Stub? Well, Torch Stub doesn't matter, because all I care about is the pump. Well, actually, it 
No, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. What am I saying? I want to cast the Anger first to try and find a land. I could have just plotted and skipped my land drop this turn, but I really want to try and find a land. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case... Again, I'm just chilling. Like, they're not doing anything. I'm just going to hold up escape. They definitely have volley. Oh, do we have do we have lore enjoyers in the chat? What if I just did an entire YouTube video where we just talked about the lore? Don't make me do it, please. Funk lore stream? Look, I don't know about all that, all right? I don't know about all that. It does sound like pretty good content, though, if you ask me. I mean, how do they win if I just Rage this turn? If four cards in hand? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to cast Rage. I want to deal them maximum damage. Okay, I do that. And they take 10, go to four. And these both have Trample. They have to kill both creatures somehow. One of my first impressions. Slick Shot, Busted. Duelist of the Mind busted. All right, three and zero. Let's uh, let's get a trophy this league, shall we? Too many ruckus. You just can't keep a hand without a creature. This one I will keep. Uh, what is the worst creature in my hand? Honestly, I think it's Virtuoso. Sounds kind of weird, but let's do it. Yeah, I, I bought my slick shots last weekend. My LGS, I went to the pre-release and my LGS had three of them, thankfully. I think they charged me like five or six for them. It's interesting. Let's just go hoplite on one. Fiery Impulse. Uh, ooh, white or red? Yeah, it has to be red. It's got to be red. I kind of hate Pathways. What if we just played four mana Confluence? Is that crazy? Young Pyromancer. Ayo? Let him cook? Yeah, I wonder if they're just playing like... Remember the 8 PZ deck that people used to play with four Pyromancer, four Iconoclast? They probably have both. I would assume that they have both Heavy Metal. So I kind of want to Courage here because I want to Courage again next turn. Why don't we go Courage, Anger, Shock, Hold Up, God's Willing? Or I should have Angered first, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to go Courage, Anger, Hold Up, God's Willing. Um, we have to hope they don't have two removal spells here. Do, 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 do. Swift Spear, Courage, Jam. I have not heard of this artist before. Swift Spear, Courage, Jam. I just don't think the Swift Spear does that much because they have the Pyromancer. I guess if I find a Monstrous Rage, the Swift Spear gets a lot better. I mean, if we get to untap with both of these, I think the game's over. Close to it. Because the Slick Shot does not care about the Pyromancer tokens. It's just kind of awkward. Like, this does kind of check the Swift Spear. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, well, <laughs> that changes things. That... Definitely changes things. Remember that thing I said about the Pyromancer bricking the Swiss beer? No mas. Although it's still maybe better to just not play the Swift Spear. Do I have lethal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Am I one short? I think I'm one short, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I'm counting 12. Courage hold up double protection. Well, it's not really double protection, right? Because this doesn't really protect me that much. But I think it is probably courage hold up all my mana. Because I'm far enough ahead. It's also pretty important that this now has 4 toughness, which means their fiery impulses don't do anything. We can almost guaranteed kill them next turn. And by almost, I mean, we can guarantee kill them next turn. Yeah, this matchup does seem pretty good for us. Well, they're not playing Phoenix Metal. They're, I think they're just playing, like, four Iconic Class, four Pyromancer, a bunch of spells. So, like, we haven't seen Phoenixes yet. We also haven't seen Picklock Pranks or anything like that. The Pro Tour assignments boarded us some number of Virtuoso. I was going to cut all four. I think that card is, I mean, 
it has its moments, but I was I was gonna cut all four. That's what I've been doing against the the Rakdos decks too, against vampires. I was just I was just cutting all four virtuoso. Is that a Balmor in the graveyard? You bet your ass it is. Balmor jump scare. What are what is this? Okay, this is definitely eight PZ. Yeah. They probably also have the bird, right? Good chance they had the bird. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if I should go Swift Spear and Rage the Swift Spear. Because it still lets me hold up everything. And it would be... Eh, it's one short, right? I'm trying to think of worst case scenario where they have like double lightning axe. Alright, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Swift Spear, go to combat. That's fancy. Well, I mean, I have four made to cast all four spells anyways. I don't want to cast the God's Willing proactively. Okay, well, now we can. <laughs> now we can. Because now, even at their last card's axe, we still beat that. <laughs> Bare arms just lethal. Yeah, true. Okay, uh, Pyromancer, huh? I don't know if this is a showdown matchup. I might want, like, one copy of Rest in Peace. I don't want to draw two, but it is good against Cruz. Uh, Rage is very good. Cut, like, two Virtuosos and one Homestead Courage. Yeah, I'm not going to board in the showdowns. I really dislike showdown against Spell Pierce decks. Like, in theory, the games can go a bit longer, but it's just so bad against Pierce if they have that. I guess they're not that likely to keep in Pierce. Yeah! Every sub today gets a custom Doomwink Yeehaw. And that's yours, Shiznas. Showdowns against Rakdos. Mostly Rakdos. I mean, I guess you could also board it against Blue White Control. But they don't have Spell Pierce. They have two mana counters. And blue white control is more likely to tap out on like turn four. They verdict you, and it's a good verdict follow up. So, yeah, we got to play this one slow. They could, yeah. Like, there is there's a reasonable chance they kept in spell pierce. Oh, perfect. Perfect draw step. Mm. Mwah. Chef's kiss. And now they just like can't even tap out. Not that they were going to, anyways, but they definitely can now. What if I just pick up Gigantha? Fuck it. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything until I draw a protection spell. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm just going to pass. I don't have to do anything. They're also not doing anything. I'm hitting my land drops. Ooh. Well, well, well. Okay, so now we get to go... Here. Here. I'm going to try to bait the removal by casting Homestead Courage first. And then after Homestead Courage, then I'm going to rage this with these two. I hope their hand's all rending volleys. Yeah, they're playing like eight Pyromancer. They showed us Meeting of Minds last game. Okay. Do they have Spell Pierce for Reckless Rage? I mean, they're probably just going to kill my show off, right? But I can't stop that from happening. Maybe I shouldn't have played the show off this turn. Like, I kind of want to go Courage on Swift Spear. Let's see if they let's see if they bite with this. This might be kind of a spew. Yeah, they're just not gonna act. Okay, well, how about we go to combat? Because they have to kill the show off before it blocks, right? Oh, okay. Well that's even better for me. So they just don't have a removal spell. Unless they just don't want to trade the removal spell for like the theoretical pump spell that I have. I was thinking about playing a double strike thing. I wonder if it's better to play Boros Charm than Team or Battle Rage, though. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. Just because Boros Charm has alternate applications. Like, it's good against Supreme Verdict. It just domes them for four. But it's, like, less high impact than something like Team or Battle Rage. Because Team or Battle Rage comes with the Trample. So, it's kind of close. Hmm. I think it's just Gigantha time. It's got to be Gigantha time, right? I think it is. Time for Juicy J to make an appearance. This is the uh, the Juicy J cameo. What about the Adventure Double Strike? What's the Adventure Double Strike? I'm not even sure I'm, I'm familiar with that card. There's an Adventure creature that gives Double Strike? That's not good. Debating if I want to go in on Virtuoso. I think the utility from Boros Charm is, is better. Well, I kind of wanted to go Virtuoso, strike the Virtuoso, discard Courage, 
It's kind of where my head was at. We definitely are hitting our land drops. Wait, really? All right, I'll pay. I'll definitely pay. I mean, if they're going to do that, I'm just going to wait till next turn. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Should have attacked first. Yeah, maybe I should have attacked first. So they couldn't do this. I mean, I didn't think they would just, you know, <laughs> make me tap two lands. But yeah, if they had some kind of, some sort of other counter spell, then it would have made more sense to attack first. Then they don't get chump blockers for these. Kind of hadn't thought about counter spells. What the hell is in their hand? Apparently, Balmore Battle Mage Captain noted. So the last card's probably a brick. All right, well, I should probably seal it up. I would like to Defiant Strike my Illuminator Virtuoso. May I do so? Please and thank you. That one. This one. I guess this one they can counter. They have to sack the Balmore, though, if they have Big Disappear. That's Slickshot. Extremely good. <laughs> Slickshot is really good. You said literally. Literally means anything, huh? <laughs> I take it back. All right, fine. Uh, okay, we can keep this. We can put back Ruckus. Yeah, Ruckus is awkward in the sand. Nah, I think I gotta put back Ruckus. Don't really have the luxury of not casting the Swift Spear. Please be kind to me. Alright, Will is not kind to me. Kind of messed up. Okay, well, it turns out you were just plotting all along. Land. Good enough, I guess. I think I'm saving the Ruckus. Yeah, I gotta save the Ruckus. This game is probably over. Hit another impulse. Hmm... Let me know when I am allowed to concede this game. Hardened Scales, Billy Bristly. Oh, I ha you bet your ass I have a Scales deck built. You think I'm going to look at Bristly Bill and not build a Hardened Scales deck? What do, you, what do you think I am? Okay, now I think I can officially concede. <laughs> My opponent has resolved Ancestral Recall, and I have one land in play. I'm out. I've seen enough. Okay, let's draw more than one land this time, please. Is Phoenix a showdown matchup? I'm going to trim on Virtuoso against them. What if I just cut all four? Uh, Reckless is kind of weird, because they can get Shredder to X5. So it's like... I mean, I guess it's the same argument as Folly. I haven't posted it yet, Otter. I cut one Courage. These mismatching Swift Spears. You know, I almost hope that I don't Trophy, because I was too lazy to change my Swift Spears, Swift Spear Arts. This matchup has got to be really bad, right? Hmm. And just YOLO? I mean, I feel like if he had a removal spell, he would have cast it on his own turn. Oh, it's still probably right to save. I can just wait till next turn. Because now if he goes for fire... Like, if he goes, consider bin a spell, fiery impulse, I can go rage to make it an X4. That's not bad either. Okay, I'm gonna leave it strike. This is where this is where stuff starts to happen. At least I think so. So how does this work if I courage? I courage, he axes. So X3, this will get it to X6. Okay, that's fine, I think. I guess in the event where he has Axe Pierce, I kinda wanna target the smaller one. Because then I get more damage out of this one, if that makes sense. And then if he does nothing on the Courage, I'm just going to pass priority and then, you know, deal him this much damage. I mean, if he's letting the, the Prowess resolve, he's probably not casting Axe now. Okay, I'm just going to attack for Rave and leave up the Rage. Because now, if he goes for Brotherhood's End, I could just save this with Spear with Rage. Or I can even save it with Defiant Strike, right? No, if they have Brotherhood's End, I can just save my creature. I just make this an X4. Chose Lightning Axe. 
Okay. It's going to axe now. Oh, I can even save both, yeah. Okay, do I rage? Wait, no, rage doesn't save it, right? Yeah, rage makes it an X5. Yeah, right, rage doesn't save it. I don't know why I thought it did. Sure. Two Phoenix is kind of sketch. Well, if he's cruising, he has to exile one of them. That's good. Cycle rage? What do you mean cycle rage? Cycle strike? Nah. I want to save the strike for my turn. That's interesting. So I can go Swift Spear, Strike, and then Rage the one that he blocks. Yeah, I'm going to try to spike it on tap land for Courage, right? God, so sketchy if he has Brotherhood's End, though. Maybe it's better to go Courage. Courage, send both. Rage the one that gets blocked. It's still loose against Brotherhood's End. How do I play around Brotherhood's End? I have to, like... Courage, hold up, strike? I mean, they're gonna block, right? Yeah, they didn't have it last turn, but they did just draw three cards. I kind of like this line. I think I kind of like this line. Just go Courage, send both, and then I'm assuming he's gonna block the bigger one. Actually, it's better for me if he blocks the bigger one, right? So, two... Wait, is this just lethal? Or he goes to one? He goes to one, right? I do the math right? Yeah, he goes to one. I guess I hold on to the shelter. Hmm. So if that's the case, I wonder if it was better to target this one. Because if I target this one, it's less... It's, what, one less damage? But then Brotherhood's End doesn't beat me because I have an X4. Big shreds. Yeah, they definitely don't have Brotherhood's End. Okay, Axe on the trample one. Well, shelter still beats this. Unless he has untapped red source fiery impulse. That's worst case scenario. Yeah, I think he's just short on red. Which is what's making this awkward. Okay, island's good. I like to see that. Oh, well that also does it right. <laughs> I cast Sajiri Shelter. <laughs> okay. Good thing I drew that spike field, huh? Player on Pierce. Yeah. I guess I could have just cast the spike field first, huh? Whatever, it's fine. Intentional. It's a keep, but I may not want to play Swiss Spear on one. Yeah, we definitely don't jam here. Hmm. That is a little unfortunate. Okay, I'm just going to go Swift Spear attack. I don't know if that was good. Maybe I should have waited another turn. Hmm. Jesus. Stop. Killing me over here, Will. Killing me, bruh. Double Pyromancer's just kind of cringe. And I guess we have the Monstrous Rage. <laughs> we also have lots of Lawrence Escapes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go Sacred Foundry. I guess we lead. Uh, let's lead Ancestral Anger. We have Rage. Yeah, I know, but... Brother, come on! I don't need four of these! Please! Give me literally anything else in my deck. Alright, I guess we're doing this. Holding up fucking four Lorenz escapes. Strike now. I got Punish for playing my Sacred Foundry. I mean, I was gonna have to play it before my Defiant Strike anyways, because I wanted to hold up Lorenz escape for... Lightning Axe, but yeah, this is this is going to be rough. For what it's worth, you can't draw anymore. <laughs> Correct. I cannot draw cards anymore. Unfortunately, the card that I have four copies of in my hand is not Cantrip. If only that was not the case. Yeah, if they tap out, but they're never going to tap out here. I think this game is just close to unwinnable at this point. Could upkeep escape, maybe? What, like, what am I even looking to draw? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm at ten. I'm just dead next turn. Draw bird. I don't think bird's even close to good enough. Like, what's the bird going to do? We just have four bricks in our hand. I did cut Reckless Rage. Maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, I'm just not sure what my out is. I mean, I'm going to cast Lauren's Escape, but <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Uh... Bottom, I guess. 
<laughs> Bottom. All right, all right, all right. We're dead, we're dead, we're dead. Yeah, I guess I could have played, like, Hoplite Pass, but it was not good enough. Definitely not good enough. Draw, you know, I would recommend when you're playing against Is It Phoenix, don't draw four copies of Loran's Escape. That would be my recommendation. Anyways, uh, this deck was good. Slickshot Show Off did definite, definitely did impress me. Uh, every time we cast that card, it was phenomenal. Like I said, it was very impressive that you have kind of the ability to plot it and kind of sequence your spells in a different way. So that was pretty good. Demonic Ruckus was amazing. But yeah, so if you're if you're looking to play some aggressive decks in your upcoming RCQ, you definitely can't go wrong with this one. And uh, thanks again for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. Please be sure to let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, YouTube.